In my last video, I told you guys about Circle to Search coming to Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. And I know all of you are rejoicing and excited about the features drop. And stay tuned till the end for all the battery and performance related improvements. And let me tell you, the performance test results were shocking. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all the future updates and exciting videos. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. I want to start with most anticipated and my favorite feature, Circle to Search. Pixel 8 and 8 Pro already had it and it's a welcoming feature for Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. This is a unique way of searching things on Google. Just press and hold the navigation button and circle out to select whatever you want to search. It will list out everything that matches the circled area in Google. You can do numerous things with this. While shopping from any store, take a picture and circle out to search or compare the prices of products online. It is an extension of Google Lens, but the whole AI thing makes it interesting. Next, there are several updates in quick settings now. Like the internet pop-up screen has a new share Wi-Fi option in the bottom left corner. Now you can easily share your Wi-Fi through a QR code or otherwise you can send it through quick share. Yeah, so the nearby share you are so used to and was there for so many years in Android is now known as quick share. Samsung already had this in one UI and now you can see this in Pixel devices too. I haven't seen any difference in behavior apart from the name change and the UI as it was horizontally arranged earlier and now you can see radio buttons to choose between the options. Next, the Bluetooth quick setting now opens a separate pop-up screen instead of just toggling on or off. Earlier it was navigating us to the settings and now you can connect your devices or pair a new device right from your quick settings. And here you have the toggle button for switching the Bluetooth on or off. The next one here is in screen record and screencast. After this update, you get an option to choose if you want to record any particular app or the entire screen. This enables you to record just what you want and is relevant as sometimes you end up recording your private information like phone numbers or notes when you are recording your entire screen. This also applies to the screencast and I don't have any compatible devices to show you, but it functions more or less in the same fashion. Now. If your app is using your camera or microphone, upon touching the indicator on your status bar helps you to understand what access you have granted to the recent apps. And if you feel any of your app shouldn't be using the microphone or camera, it can be easily closed or you can revoke the access. This feature definitely adds an additional layer of privacy and transparency. Next, we have few other UI changes in home and lock screen, like the volume slider has got a new design and it is now enclosed within this area instead of just sliding on a thin line like before. It makes more sense than the older design as this is more intuitive and aesthetically pleasing. Coming on to the lock screen. In this particular lock screen template, if you have set some alarm or activated do not disturb on your device, you can see two new indicators or icons for your alarms and do not disturb. It is also there when you have ambient display enabled. Now let's move on to the settings and see what are the changes here. If you go to the sound and vibration settings, you can now control the intensity of the vibrations for your haptic feedback, notifications, alarms or ringtones. This feature was added to Pixel 8 and 8 Pro a little early and is available to other Pixel devices now. Also, if you'll notice the toggle icon is changed here. It is slightly reduced in width and a bit taller than before. This is consistent and almost everywhere in the settings now. Next, in apps, you'll see a new setting for the Cloud Media app. You can now select the account through which your cloud media can be accessed. You can also grant access to the photo picker for photos and videos, whether or not they can be shared with other apps. Next in system settings, the system updates is now known as software updates and has got a new pixel is up to date screen with system updates and app updates. You can check here for system and security updates and app updates will take you to the manage apps and devices screen where you can easily see if any apps are pending updates. Some features are reflected after you update the respective app and keeping all the updates related stuff together makes an absolute sense. Next, we have a new improved or faster way of pairing with your devices. You can now access previously set up Bluetooth accessories on your new phone or tablet and fast pair. This means you can easily connect with any device that was earlier paired with any of your older accounts. Now let's look at some application related updates. 
Several new updates have been introduced to the contact app, enhancing the user experience and functionality. The first notable change is the introduction of suggestions within contacts. Now you will notice convenient pop-up prompts offering suggestions to merge or remove duplicate contacts. Furthermore, upon navigating to the fix and merge screen, you will discover a fresh addition to the array of tools, contact ringtones. This new feature allows you to assign ringtones to individual contacts, adding a personalized touch for each contact. Another significant alteration is the reorganization of connected apps within contact information. Now, all connected apps are neatly categorized within a dedicated section, providing users with a clearer overview and easier access to relevant information. Also, not sure if this was there before, but I recently noticed that you can set reminders for each contact and you'll find this option in contact settings here. The next major change we have in Google Play Store. The Play Store search is completely revamped now. You will notice a complete transformation as all the games and applications are now meticulously categorized and seamlessly organized within the search interface. For instance, if you are specifically seeking out zombie games, simply navigate to the dedicated category within the search options. This refined categorization not only streamlines the search process, but also enhances the overall user experience, ensuring quicker access to the desired content. Within the files interface, you will now find a convenient addition, the scan document option situated at the bottom right corner. This feature was already there, but its accessibility has been enhanced with the introduction of dedicated button within the file interface. So the next update involves the Gmail app. Gmail has introduced its own predictive back animation feature. When reading an email, a partial back gesture reveals a preview of the previous screen, enhancing navigation fluidity. Another subtle change has been made in Gboard. Now, when you copy text from the text box, a small clip icon appears preceding the copied text. Upon touching it, the clipboard expands to display the copied content. It's time to look into some exciting performance gains after this update. I bet you won't be disappointed because we took different measures to test performance on Pixel 7. So, we decided to jump straight into gaming with the sole aim of pushing our devices to the absolute limit. Let me tell you, diving into heavy hitters like World War Heroes was a breeze. It didn't take any time from the loading screen to the gameplay. This game packs a punch with its intense graphics and detailed rendering of objects like tanks and vehicles. I'm not really into mobile gaming and I never pushed it to this extent before. After about 15 to 20 minutes of intense action, we switched gears to Call of Duty for another adrenaline fueled 10 to 15 minutes. Surprisingly, our Pixel 7 held up like a champ, keeping it cool both in terms of performance and temperature. But we weren't done yet. We fired up Asphalt 9 and raced through it for about 10 to 12 minutes. At some point, I started feeling the heat, but the game was still on. So we went on a gaming spree, trying out different games back to back. And then came the moment of truth. After nearly 40 to 45 minutes of intense gaming, the phone was definitely warm, but here's the kicker. I didn't notice any drop in performance. I navigated through different screens. This phone didn't even flinch. Everything from opening apps to loading screens worked like a charm. I also did some photo editing and it was flawless. The best part was that the temperature cooled down pretty quickly and our trusty Pixel 7 was craving to go for the next challenge. And there is no bigger challenge than the camera app. With the same intention to test it for extreme scenarios, we started the 4K video recording to test its limit. Camera usage heats the phone pretty quickly and this is common across all Pixel devices. We wanted to observe two important things, where the phone will drop the performance and tune down the quality and next when it stops recording due to crossing the temperature threshold. But let me tell you, I'm not exaggerating, but I have the results and it's shockingly amazing. As the 4K video recording that I started went on and on and on without any performance or quality drop. And due to the storage limitation, I had to stop the recording at 20 minutes. This is insane. It could have gone further. And this is by far the best performance I have ever experienced in camera of Pixel 7. I will conclude this in a bit. But on the same note, battery performance is also improved. And here are the stats. I played the game for almost 40 to 45 minutes and the battery was down from 100% to just 87%. 4K video recording for up to 20 minutes just took 5% of the battery. This was just for these instances, but overall, all the apps and system updates are consuming less battery than usual. And on the Wi-Fi network, I'm getting close to 7 hours of screen on time 
and with 4G and 5G mobile networks, I'm getting close to 6.5 hours of screen on time and a full day usage with 10 to 15% battery remaining. With minimal usage, I was able to get a backup of two days without charging my phone. And you know what? There were several underlying bugs that are resolved as part of this update. And there were many issues that were indirectly impacting the performance and battery of the phone. So this update is a blessing in disguise. So the bottom line is this was not just a regular update. You can call it as a mini Android upgrade with new features and lots of bug fixes. There is nothing much to say here. Pixel 7's performance has drastically improved and it is working flawlessly. Let me know in the comments if you have noticed any of these improvements or you can just go ahead and test these scenarios on your own and you'll definitely see the difference. I hope you have enjoyed the video and if you have loved it, please like, share and subscribe. Till then, my name is Sushant. See you in the next video.